Good evening all and welcome. Tonight's video has been graciously sponsored by Skillshare. This amazing platform offers a huge variety of online classes on literally anything you can think of, taught by the experts themselves. And with many of us now being stuck at home a hell of a lot more, it might be time to brush up on your existing skills or learn something entirely new. Be productive, make the most of your time like me. I've been learning Tai Chi from the Aquarius Academy, and I think I'm really starting to get somewhere now. If anyone else is interested, I highly recommend them. There are so many classes you can do, so go nuts and learn everything you possibly can. The first 1000 people who click the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. So hurry up because this won't last longer than a few days. But for now, it's time to get comfortable and let the darkness take control. Every year, my family has this huge family reunion with hundreds of people that go to the same campground. One of the things that some of us do is a ghost walk. There's a dirt access slash logging road that goes out of the campground and up into the mountains. And even though it's kind of against the rules, we walk up it as a group until we're sufficiently creeped out. Sometimes if we're feeling up to it, we make the one to two miles away from the campground up the pitch black hills. We have a no flashlight rule to help preserve our night vision and add to the creepiness, which comes into play later. This year, the group of about 10 to 15 people had left without me and my stepson, who was 15 at the time. So we decided we were going to sneak up on them and see how close we could get without being noticed. We tailed them for over an hour on the walk and we're definitely well over a mile, if not two from the campground, sometimes getting within 20 feet of them. As my goal was to sneak right up and grab one of the people in the back, but that didn't happen. Sometimes they would get super jumpy and we'd wait for a bit for them to walk ahead. One of these times we were hiding just off the woods, just off the side of the road. And we both saw a dark outline of someone and a dime light about five to 10 feet away. It looked like someone had a small flashlight and was holding their hand over the beam to try and keep hidden. I was mad that someone had broken the no flashlight rule and figured they knew we had been following them and left an uncle behind to catch us. I whispered, don't say anything. We're trying to scare them. And whoever was there whispered back, okay, that was it. They didn't say anything else, just stood there waiting for us in the dark for what must have been 30 seconds to a minute before we took off after them. We never got close enough to scare them and heard them turning back around. So we hid in the woods and stalked them on our way back, scared them right outside the campground. Once everyone got to talking, it turns out that no one had left the group and they had no clue that we were following them. So they wouldn't have left anyone to catch us. My stepson agrees we saw and heard the same thing. We all had the encounter and we were pretty far down the dirt road. I would definitely say we were at least a mile and a half from the campground and we didn't see anyone else walking. And I don't think we've ever had one on these ghost walks. It's like the 10th year we'd done it. It's stupid dark out there and I can literally think of zero reasons why anyone would be out there hiding off in the road while my family are walking past. And it was chilling when we found out it wasn't a relative and we had just stood there with whoever it was for what felt like a long time. My wife and I were hiking a very long way from the trailhead, at least seven miles in on a snowy day. We had the whole mountain to ourselves and hadn't seen another person all day and didn't see another track. Near the top of a hill, we walk into a grove of cedars when this guy comes out of nowhere from behind a tree, like super deliberately heads right for us, hand in pockets, breathing heavily and shifting his eyes from left to right, as if hoping no one else would see what he was about to do. As he comes up to us, he went to pull his hand out of his pocket quickly and whatever he was pulling got caught. He tried several more times and it wouldn't come out. Then he started to stand there and make small talk. So we noped out of there. I'm positive he was trying to pull a gun and feel like we might have been his first failed attempt. 
I was hiking a section of the North Mkua Trail, the northern part of Southern Oregon, a few years back, with my sister-in-law. It's about a 72 mile trail broken into sections that can be easily hiked in a day. At the time, I lived about midway up the trail, fairly remote in a small community. It was mid fall this one day when we set out. The trail was running along the south side of the North Umkua River and was pretty up and down in the beginning. We made it to a fairly flat section that was running just above the river. There was this beautiful view of the river through the trees, so we stopped to take some pictures and have a water break. I immediately felt extremely uncomfortable, like someone was watching us. I slowly turned my head to look behind us across the trail and up a very small incline. Through the trees, I could see a small meadow. Across the meadow, maybe 15 yards from us, was a tent, an old canvas style tent. As I'm looking, I notice bones strung from the trees all around the meadow, like creepy death wind chimes. My stomach just clenched and dropped. I leaned into my sister-in-law and whispered, don't turn around. Don't look behind us. Just continue walking and run when I tell you. We were close enough to the river that nobody, not right behind us, could have heard this. She did exactly as I told her to do, setting off at the brisk walk we'd been at before. We got maybe 10 yards and I could hear footsteps through the forest floor coming from behind and slightly above us. That part of the forest is very dense. There is a thick moss cover under the trees, so footsteps on it make a very specific sound. I leaned forwards and told her to pick up speed. She did. I did. And so did whoever was behind us. I leaned forward again and told her to run as fast as she could and not stop until I told her to. For two middle-aged women, both slightly overweight, we ran like the damn wind. I just kept telling her to go. I could see ahead of us that the trail made an incline and veered to the right along the river and around the cliff. I knew at that point that whoever it was was going to have to come down on the trail or stop. We kept running. We probably ran at least a mile after that, even though we could no longer hear anyone behind or above us. That section of the trail was about nine miles and we were not halfway when this happened. We eventually slowed down, but just hurried as fast as we could the rest of the way. We had arranged for her younger brother, not my ex, to pick us up. So we made our way out to 138 and started walking east towards home, knowing he'd find us. He did, and was shocked at our story. We got home and immediately called our local sheriff, who lived just above us at the ranger station. He came to the house and heard our story, and explained it might be a day or two before they could get into the trail, as they had a missing hunter at the time they were searching for. So a few days go by, and he shows up at our house to let me know that we were not crazy or imagining things, and someone really did chase us. I ask what they found and who it was, and he looks down at the ground and looks up and said, I'm not going to tell you what we found or who it was, because if I do, you'll never hike anywhere again. What we found was not normal and will not happen again here. He then instructed me to never ever hike unarmed again. I never found out what they found out or who it was. I never hiked that section of the trail again and it completely burnt last year. I also never hiked unarmed again. That was huge for me as I was not a gun person. I've had many incidents living up there in a national forest with wild animals and other strange things, but nothing has ever scared me as much as that day. Me and a group of 20 others were hiking in a two person side to side line through thick woods at around 1am. We managed to find a muddy road, which we continued to walk over for miles before going back into the woods. While walking on the muddy road, I held a conversation with one of my friends that was to the right of me. After a while of talking, I noticed that my group was further ahead of me than before, so I picked up the pace. As I got closer, I noticed something odd. The friend I was talking to was already with the rest of my group. I asked him, how did he get back so quick? And he turned and looked at me and said, 
I was wondering where you were, you disappeared for a good five minutes. Let's just say I didn't feel right after hearing those words. I know for a fact I was speaking to him earlier, and if not him, then someone exactly with all the same gear. Luckily, nothing happened after that, but I was pretty shook for the rest of the hiking night. This all happened in Poland when I was a teenager as part of what I call a survivalist camp. This was when I was 13. I made this discovery with my cousin. We would often venture back behind my house into the woods. I knew my way around it, my neighbors knew their way around it, and so forth. There were little foot trails worked into the ground from both active deer running through and us walking there every other day. We normally would only go and relax by a special tree next to a nice little stream we found, but ended up walking a bit further along the deer path. I remember it being a few months since the last time I'd been back there, but along this path I'd walked dozens of times before, I saw a red and white beer cooler, like the ones you'd take camping off to the side. Now I knew this was a very rural community, pretty much everyone hunted deer and or owned guns. I decided to check this cooler out, being a cautious teen, and I kid you not, it was full of blood. Not just like all dumped in there, but dozens of Ziploc bags of blood. It scared the bloody hell out of me and we left immediately. Being young, I was scared and didn't tell adults, as I wrote it off as being deer blood. I went back a few months after with a different cousin of mine, as my family hosted lots of summer camping slash grills, and the cooler was still in the exact same way I left it, opened and showing all of its contents. It reached to ungodly levels at this point, as you might imagine, being in mid-Michigan summer heat constantly. I don't know why, but my young brain thought it would be a good idea to dump it all out and stab the bags open, as I carried a little life with me to make me look cool. I haven't been back since, but have the feeling the cooler will still be there. I don't think that there were any missing people ever reported in my hometown, and I sometimes think back about it, and I just wonder. Who the hell put that cooler there? I was backpacking in the Smoky Mountains with several guys. The guy at the front of us on the trail suddenly stopped. There was a rattlesnake in the middle of the path. It was a big old rattlesnake coiled up, shaking its rattle and ready to kill. After about 10 minutes, we realized the beast wasn't going to let us pass because it was a very thin path on the side of a mountain. We all had to climb up the hill about 50 feet, then walk through a stream to get past the rattlesnake, then back up to go around it. Because as you can imagine, trying to fight off a rattlesnake that's pissed is not a very good idea. We were out with a few friends a few miles from Pikes Peak in Colorado. We're hiking on this trail and up ahead I see a blue windbreaker in the middle of the trail. We hadn't seen anyone else out walking all day, as it's pretty remote where we're staying. So it was weird for it to be placed right in the middle of the path. But hey, things happen and people drop things, so maybe it fell out of a backpack and no one noticed. The windbreaker was just a piece of this entire campsite we ended up coming across that was absolutely torn to shreds. There was a tent, a hammock, a cooler, a backpack, various articles of clothing thrown around as well. The tent had broken poles, was shredded, and looked like it was from the early 2000s, and the fading that was apparent with the old style of it. Think of a four-person basic tent from Walmart, not a nice, fancy, lightweight backpacking thing. The hammock was still hanging, empty. The cooler was open and empty. A few shirts and shorts were scattered, and the backpack was empty. We told ourselves it must be some homeless shelter, and that was a good enough excuse for us to leave everything how it was and continue back to the cabin that we were staying at. I had a bad experience in Montana on some medication that affected my oxygen intake and decided to go back on my own, which entailed sleeping by myself a few nights which at 10,000 feet can be a little frightening in itself. On the last day hiking, I was exhausted. I wouldn't have even been able to fend off an aggressive six-year-old. 
I then came across a freshly killed elk, literally lying on the trail. This was a very large animal, and two Europeans came across the scene exactly at the same time, and just lost their minds and took off running. I was barely able to walk, and just hoped whatever killed the animal would leave me alone. I did make it back okay. Just this last October, I was in Dolly Sods in West Virginia, and somehow ended up getting turned around. I've been on at least 16 backpacking trips out west at much higher altitudes, and have never gotten lost. It was long day, around 15 miles with a full pack. And to this day, I have no idea how I ended up getting turned around. It was like an episode of the Twilight Zone, and I started having thoughts that wasn't in my reality anymore, and that I would walk this trail for eternity. My brother and friend went out looking for me, which felt terrible. I met a couple who had also been lost, but figured out where they were, and I followed them out. I literally ended up going in the opposite direction, and to this day have no idea how I could have been that clueless. It was a big deal and sent me into a deep depression. I'm fine now, but feel that something strange certainly happened in those mountains. I live near Lake of the Woods in northwestern Ontario. This one time, a friend and I were mountain biking on a hot day in August when we ended up on a trail in the bush, where there is an abandoned car graveyard. Nothing too scary, it's pretty normal for people to scrap their cars out in the bush here, so we carry on. Buddy and I are excited to explore the area because there is a lot of interesting vehicles and parts to build jumps with. We end up sticking for about an hour or two until dusk, just starting to set in when we come across a black 1950s Buick Roadmaster that looked like it got halfway through restoration. That's when we realized that something was sort of off about this place. There were no properties near this spot for miles, and it was very strange that someone would abandon such a beautiful car halfway through repair. My alarm bells were ringing, but only a little, so we carried on, and we were pretty beat from all the riding that we were doing that day, and decided to find a place to rest, and walked a little more into the trail towards a small dirt pile when we immediately realized that something was definitely wrong. The place was littered with animal bones from different animals. There were deer skulls, rabbits, dogs, and what looked like feline bones. I'm starting to feel a little sick to my stomach, but my buddy seems unfazed by it. I can't tell if he's the braver of the two of us or less intelligent at this point, because I keep telling him with increasing urgency that we need to get on our bikes and get the hell out of here. He tells me I shouldn't worry and tries to rationalize it by saying that it was some hunters illegally dumping here despite the canine bones. He walked to the other side of the dirt pile, turned around, ghost white and said, we need to get out of here now. I managed to peek around and caught a glimpse of what was on the other side. Holy Jesus, someone built a shrine here. I'm screaming inside of my head to leave, and I scramble to grab my bike and my backpack. As we're about to pedal off, we hear someone shouting, Hey! to the right of us in the thick. I've never bolted so damn fast out of somewhere in my entire life. I try to get a glimpse behind me. There's an old man in a plaid shirt, with blue jean overalls, at near the dirt pile with a shovel in his hand, shouting at us and gesturing for us to come back. When we thought we got close enough to the main road, we decided to take a break and catch our breath. My friend and I are soaked with sweat, chugging our water and completely unsure of what we just saw. We sat on the road for about five minutes, relieved that nothing became of it, and talked about what it might have been. My friend and I still trying to rationalize it when suddenly we hear a loud vroom, and my heart skipped a beat. He started the car, and we peeled down the main road to his house in what felt like two minutes, which should have been at least a ten minute ride. I could feel the lactic acid building up in my legs from pedaling so hard, gears maxed out even uphill. This was 12 years ago. I still don't know what was happening down that trail, but I'm glad I never stayed to find out. I went hiking around the Lake District in England in 2018 with my dad. 
It's a generally hilly area and rural and very beautiful. We stayed in a B&B for the week. And for a few of these days, it was raining very heavily as it was February. My dad's been trying to complete his bucket list for the last few years and hiking in heavy rain was on it because it reminded him of Brazil from when he lived there. We had a bunch of gear and walked around. The plan was to start small in the Lake District and then eventually work our way up to Mount Snowdon in Wales. During our second day of hiking, the ground was very slodgy. We sat down on a steep hill 20 feet above the ground level and watched the sunset. Then the ground started moving beneath us. It was a landslide and our weight on top of it had pretty much done it. I slid down 15 feet of mud, sprained my ankle badly, and my dad reached out to grab me and slid down with me. I had managed to dig my feet into the mud and stopped myself. I was pretty much at the bottom by the time I stopped and the ground was very much level there. I was covered in about a foot and a half of dirt and was muddy from head to toe. It took about 20 minutes to get me out safely and we had the air ambulance come and grab me because I was afraid I'd broken my leg. That was the closest near-death experience I've come to and the scariest moment I've ever had while hiking out in the woods. I was helping run a 99 planter in Trinity County near the Pines and my girlfriend came out to visit. We had a day off and decided to hike down a well-known ATV trail. Well, we mess up at some point and literally end up walking into the barrel of an AK-47. The dude was just there, all of a sudden in the bush. He knew we were coming. He was a tiny little dude and spoke no English. He was as scared as we were and was yelling instructions in Spanish, which I barely spoke. But luckily my girl, having grown up, in East LA did speak some. She calmed him down and explained that we had a spot over at the next hill and that we were just hiking. He calmed down and actually ended up walking back with us to the main trail where we parted. He was all business the whole time, never smiled or laughed about the mix up or took his guard down. We likely had stumbled on an illegal ass cartel grow as there are tons out there and were lucky as hell that he didn't just try to end and bury us there and then. I'm hoping someone can help me understand what it was I saw. I live in upstate New York in a relatively high traffic hiking trail that runs alongside a stream for a portion. Last week, I noticed a dead deer near the stream, pretty common in our area, specifically in winter, and went for a walk yesterday evening. I passed where the deer was and saw something that had been really messing with me since. Something was crouched over the dead deer. It looked like a pig, but large. The size of a grown man with loose sagging skin. The whole face was kind of sagging and leaking out of its nose and eyes. I've worked with livestock before, so I know what pigs look like. And this pig was all the wrong shape. Its body was swollen, its back legs were splayed out, and I could see they were really long. It had virtually no hair, just smooth skin, and it was sitting on its back haunches near the deer. And by the time I got close enough to see it, it was staring at me still. I have this sick certainty that it noticed me before I noticed it. I was standing about 20 feet away, still basically on the trail, and it was just staring at me. The deer carcass was kind of everywhere, as it had been messily eaten. And while I was watching the pig, it raised both its front legs and saw that they ended not in cleft feet, but in large hands like humans. It reached into the deer, ripped off a chunk of its side, raised it to its snout and ate out of its hand. All of this went down in a matter of seconds. As soon as I saw it had hands, I just turned back the way I came and walked as fast as I could out of there. I wanted to run, but I was afraid it would chase me, so I went back the way I came in, just trying to stay calm. It was the worst walk of my life. I was too afraid to look behind me because I was scared I would see the pig thing following me, but I made it out and ran across the parking lot to my car. Now I'm just trying to understand this encounter. I want to believe my mind was playing tricks on me. I haven't found anything on the internet about this creature, and if anyone has ever seen anything like this, please tell me. I need to know what I saw that night. 
One night, my best friend Joey and I were cruising Maine in our hometown Bismarck. This was last summer. We got bored around 11 p.m. and I asked if he wanted to hike up to the Indian village lookout by the river, and he said sure. So we park at the bottom of the trail and start walking. Now this hike is probably a little under a mile and is pretty steep the whole way up on a paved walking trail. He was wearing dudes and I was wearing basketball style shoes. On the way up, he and I were making stupid jokes about the Native American ghosts trying to get us and stuff. We were trying to scare each other. Now, once you get to about 0.15 miles from the top, the rest of the hike gets even steeper. And it's surrounded by a sort of small forest area. So it's pretty dark. But I had a powerful flashlight. So we get to the top and enjoy the view of the river for a few minutes and then head back down. On the way down, we kept joking to each other that there was something behind us, and neither was falling for it. So we get halfway down and Joey says to me, Logan, there's actually something behind us. And he sounded genuinely frightened. But I thought, yeah, right. So I shine my flashlight back for about two seconds because that's all I needed. And about a hundred yards behind us, there was a human height black figure with its eyes illuminated by the light. We both took off at a dead sprint down the hill and a few seconds after he said, chill out, chill out, it's just a biker. And we waited for a few seconds, watching it slowly come towards us. And then he said, that's not a biker. And we both took off running down the hill, probably a quarter of a mile to his car, and waited there for a good 15 minutes watching the trail when nothing came down. We drove up the road where you can look up the trail and saw nothing. I genuinely do not think it was a biker for a few reasons. It was a quiet night and we didn't hear anything. No bike noises, tire noises, nothing. Nobody's gonna be riding their bike out at 11 p.m. and no one ever came down the trail. Like I mentioned earlier, that's a pretty steep hill, so someone isn't just gonna turn around in the middle of going down it. We never saw any other people while going up or at the bottom of the hill, so it wasn't another person. The only other logical explanation I can think of would be a deer. But there's no way that it was a deer because we saw it coming closer. Deer don't follow a person running away from them, and we never heard any noises in the grass or anything. It was just a very spooky experience to say the least. We live in the woods bordering a massive park system in Alberta. We have bears, lynx, moose, wolves and cougars. The cougars, well, and moose scare me more than anything out here. My husband and I were hiking an old hunting trail quite far into the park with our dog. The dog was super big, a Rottweiler slash Irish wolfhound and very well trained, who sadly passed away at a fairly young age. We'd been out hiking for about two hours and stopped for a rest on a fallen log. We'd been sitting for a few minutes when suddenly the dog starts sits up and stares intently into the dense brush bordering the path. After a minute, he jumps up and starts growling intensely, hackles up, standing between us and the brush. We don't see a thing, but we know there are cougars in the area and not much else is so quiet and hidden out there. So we pack up and start hiking back. The dog is super relieved and we're leaving and walks alongside us, checking behind every so often. We hike back for 10 minutes or so and the dog stops again, staring behind us and starts growling loudly. We have bear spray but no gun, and we figure the cougar is following us now. So we keep hiking back, adrenaline high, bear spray out. It goes like that for roughly an hour. Hike for a while, dog watching our back, and occasionally stopping to growl and snarl at whatever he senses that we don't. The dog stays tense the rest of the way back, and kept checking over our shoulder. But the last half of the hike back home, he didn't growl at anything else, at least. 
still scared the crap out of us both. And we were super grateful that the dog stuck to us instead of running off to chase the cougar, which ends in them being eaten, but was big and aggressive enough to keep the cougar at bay. I do wildlife photography. So go hiking every Sunday and have been doing this for about a year now. With the frequency I go hiking, it might be surprising that I've had two experiences, or maybe not. Both of these have taken place in the western part of Wisconsin. My first experience was at a semi defunct state campground in the middle of summer. I say semi defunct because there was a newer gravel parking lot by the gravel road and a gated off road leading deeper into what used to be a paved parking lot and paved RV and campsites. It's about a mile from the gravel parked lot to the paved lot. And this walk goes just fine. The road continues past the paved lot for about a mile, then splits into almost non existent trails. It was after I got past the paved lot that things started to get strange. I started to get a weird feeling that was hard to describe. It just felt like wrong. Every step I took, I had the thought that I shouldn't take another step and that I should turn around. This feeling kept growing and growing in intensity until I got to the end of the road and just couldn't take it anymore and turned and went the way back because I had the strongest feeling that if I went on a trail, something very bad would happen. The walk back to the gravel lot was just fine. And by the time I got to the lot, the feeling was completely gone. And I looked for a gates on the gravel road. The second one I will say I think was probably a deer, but I'll let you decide. This hike was in the early fall. I went off trail down a gully and followed a small creek. All in all, it was a good hike until I rounded a bend and saw a cave. My initial thought was to go check it out. Then that nagging feeling was like, no, something bad is in there. I was admittedly thinking more along the lines of a homeless person. As soon as I turned away, I had the same being watched feeling so many people describe and I had to just get out of there. So I backtracked my steps and was about two miles into the hike when the feeling suddenly got much, much stronger. Eyes darting all over the place. I was literally almost walking sideways on the trail. And then all of a sudden there was a huge crash behind me. I didn't see anything before or after the crash. This is where I think it might have been a deer, but I didn't see anything. The feeling intensified all the way until I got into my car and locked the doors. It got better as I collected myself in the car. I don't know how to explain these could just be an overactive fight or flight response, but they stick out to me from all my other experiences. And I can't help but think of them. Let me know what you think. My wife and I enjoy hiking, camping, and just being out in nature. We aren't experts or even heavy hobbyists by any stretch of the imagination, but it's something we like to do a few times a year. About three and a half years ago, we decided to go on a spontaneous overnight trip in the forest we live near. We know the trails well, and it's pretty popular, so we didn't do much planning. Just figured we'd go and find a nice spot and enjoy some time alone. We drove the trails, parked and began our hike. A little over a mile or so in, we discovered a minor trail leading away from the main one. We decided to head that way and explore some, eventually taking a deer trail down to the lake. We went around a few coves and eventually found a nice lakeside spot to set up. So at this point, after a slew of bad decisions, we're set up. Everything is great until the next morning when we pack up and head the way we came. I guess we got mixed up and went up the wrong hill because after an hour, we realized we were totally lost. No trails, no landmarks, nothing. We went the way we thought would take us back to the trails for seven hours. No food, ran out of water, and we're basically screwed. Fast forward a bit and we finally hit level ground. So take a rest. A few minutes in, however, I look up and out of the corner of my eye, I see someone pass behind a tree and disappear. Now, 
It was probably my mind messing with me, considering the circumstances, but regardless, it spooked the carp out of me. Enough so that I grabbed my wife's hand and led her in the opposite direction. Within a few minutes, we're suddenly on the trail that we hadn't noticed before, heading us to a graveyard that marks the end of the main trail. A couple of miles later, we reached the car and went home. Now, chances are it wasn't paranormal, but something about how it all ended up working out, and the fact that we stumbled across the trail leading to the graveyard had always stuck with me. Not the scariest encounter, I'm sure, but an interesting experience, to say the least. Me and my now ex-girlfriend used to go to local parks late at night. We'd just walk the trails and talk about whatever was on our minds. We lived in a small town, had three parks in the area almost completely to ourselves late at night. The cops never bothered us, and no one else in the area thought of going to the park at midnight. It was around 1am one night that we used to frequent. The park has a four plus mile nature trail that winds and bends. We've walked it a few times before the whole way and back and never seen anything too out of the ordinary, but a few surprises, such as walking up on a herd of deer that were sleeping and the occasional coyote, which runs away once it sees our flashlight. We were walking the trail about a mile in when we both heard a horrendously loud crash and both nearly crapped ourselves and caught with the flashlight a large, probably 30 foot tall pine tree falling over 20 feet away from us. After about 10 minutes of silent listening and trying to calm ourselves down, we came to the conclusion that it must have possibly been weakened, like by some natural cause, and continued walking for another half hour or so. We started talking about other things, almost forgetting that the tree fell, when another tree, this time an oak, about 40 feet tall fell right next to us. This one was easily 10 feet from us and we noped out of there and both ran for our lives back to my truck. If you've ever heard a tree fall fully intact, it's an awfully eerie sound. The ripping and groaning of the roots being pulled from the earth, followed by the deep concussive thump of the tree hitting the ground. All this happening in the middle of the night by the light of an old flashlight within a few seconds. For the record, there wasn't any wind that night, and from what I could record, the ground was not wet or anything like that. I went back to where the trees fell during midday a few days later, and saw that they both looked to be perfectly healthy trees. Both trees fell away from us almost perfectly. No obvious signs of foul play. And about a week later, the park service cut the trees up and removed them from the park. My girlfriend was always uncomfortable talking about that night and would always change the subject. And we eventually separated a few years. My girlfriend and I were terribly freaked out about it for a while and led to our late night park excursions ending. Just the odds of it happening must be almost astronomical, right? two different species of trees that were a very large distance and quite apart from each other, and that happened to fall as we were very near them. I'm the guy who will try and find any plausible explanation, but that night has bothered me over the years from time to time. I truly wonder if there is something else more sinister behind it. It was 2016. I asked my husband to drop me off at the nearest arboretum on his way to a job, my favorite park. Usually there were a lot of joggers and people with dogs, so it didn't seem like a bad idea to just go in the middle of the day by myself. On that particular day, I think I was almost alone except for one other guy. I kept running into him, maybe mid thirties taking pictures. He looked like a park ranger, so at first I didn't find him creepy nor unusual. I'm also there taking pictures. I just start making it a point to get away because I didn't want to ruin his photos. At some point, I got the feeling like I am the subject of his photos. And that was when I started getting creeped out. I began looking for a way out the park. As I made my way out, he was there again. I tried to keep it friendly and say something innocuous related to the job. I don't remember what. And he said, Oh, I don't work here. We said nothing more. We are out of the park 
and I ran up to my husband's car and say, Hi, honey, I missed you. Not deterred by my husband's presence at all, the guy came over before I could tell my husband about what happened and he just said, By the way, my name's Jordan. Check out my photos on Facebook, and handed me a business card. I never did check out his page, but his business card floated around my bag for months, reminding me that I didn't enjoy solo hiking anymore. Last summer, me and my brother took a walk through the woods at Silver Falls State Park in Oregon. The forests were beautiful and cool, so we figured why not, and took a path into the trees. We were pretty far down the path when it happened. Our cabins were far out of view and out of earshot, and we had just turned a corner and began going up the side of a cliff when my brother froze. I asked him what was wrong, and he was near tears when he told me he wanted to go back. We jogged back to the cabins and he told me he saw a black streak that was in the shape of a human, with a long nose, bald head and skinny limbs, dashing silently through the trees. I've never seen my brother in this state. He was crying and shaking. I've been thinking about it. Could it have been a cryptid? Maybe whatever it was, if it wasn't just my brother's imagination. It's what snatches people up in the blink of an eye, in missing 411 cases. I want to add that it was definitely no jogger or fellow camper. I spoke to my brother again and he described it in the same way. Shorter, black, human-shaped, running silently past before vanishing completely behind a tree. We ventured back to the spot a little later, and saw nothing. My sister and one of her friends were descending a local mountain in Romania. The weather was crap, to say the least. And it was switched between raining and snowing on very slippery paths. As we were struggling with our gear, trying not to fall, deciphering what was ahead, measuring our every step, this silhouette from behind us kept closing in. There's this guy in shorts with a huge backpack. The usual hello, but nothing out the ordinary. He kept going ahead of us, and eventually disappeared. Fast forward about two hours and this guy comes back from the mist, but on a path somehow parallel to ours about 40 to 50 meters further, and vanishes on his way to the top. We started to wonder about him. The shorts, the pack, the fact that he went ahead of us from behind, and the fact that he came back and went to the top again in that weather. We couldn't engage in a chat or anything because of the distance between us, so we started thinking the worst. He's following us. He's planning something. What's with the shorts? Why doesn't he have some proper pants? Surely in that huge pack, he must have a pair of long ones, etc. I kid you not, but fast forward another three, four hours and this guy is on the last few kilometers of the path right behind us. The girls, sister and her friend froze, and they were already frozen from the weather, but this is on another level. I, being the only man there, felt the need to finally confront him. I always thought that in these situations, it's best to be cool about it, and at least act like you have the higher ground. So I salute him, and try to defuse the situation, asking him if he forgot his wallet on the summit. He laughs and tells us he's actually the maintenance guy from the cabins on the top. So at the top they had a vacuum cleaner, Hoover, and it broke down and this guy ordered a new engine for it. And it arrives the day before we started descending, and he figured he's picking it up the next day, the same day we descend. The engine arrives at the bottom cabin, and whoever orders it must, by its own means, carry it to the top. It's actually a path that takes six to seven hours on clear weather. Blizzard and or rain adds another two. This guy made it at least three times in that day, with an engine in his pack in shorts. All in all, a very nice guy and obviously fit, like Yeti fit. We all agreed, we need a healthier lifestyle. Hey guys, it's Mort here, thank you so much for listening. Have you ever come home and thought, man, my house needs a spring clean? Well, that's how I feel. Not only about my house, but about my channel. I think it's time to shake things up.
I know you guys enjoy what I do, but I think that I can certainly improve on some stuff. I looked at my channel earlier and thought, damn, it's been looking the same forever. Maybe I really need to spend some time doing something to improve the quality or, I don't know, improve something. I think it can be better. Anyway, I'd love some feedback on this. You guys are the ones who watch it. What do you think I can and should improve on? Please give me your thoughts, feedbacks, everything. I really would love to know. Preferably by email too. You can find it in the description. So yeah, all thoughts are valid. There are no stupid questions. And feel free to just hit me up. I really, really, really would appreciate it. What do you think Mort can do better? Anyway, think about it. As always, a huge thank you to my members and patrons whose names can be seen on screen. You guys are amazing. You help me out a lot. And I am infinitely grateful for everything you guys do. So thanks, guys. I'm going to leave this here, though. So for now, stay awesome. And I'll see you in the next one.